trap right here. Check up, follow up on the motorcycle repair. CM 400E. Started it up last night. Hooked it up. This is the second time I played around with this year. I know it started. But yeah, last night I started it up for the first time and the second time. I did it twice. <clears throat> I was uh, optimistic it would start. It started, like I said, right up. I, uh, I was very confident that it would. And it did. I made the measurements with the uh, voltmeter, checked the battery supply coming off the car to the motor side, 13.47 volts. So that's measured the voltage at the starter with the you know key ignition, and and it was uh, zero or thereabouts. So I, I thought, well, is this getting there? And I go, oh yeah, it has to go through the starter button. Never mind. So I didn't really worry about it. I just hooked the, um, the meter up to the uh, motorcycle battery to monitor that voltage as I started it. And as soon as I pushed the button, it started right up. Then it quit. So I adjusted the choke, pulled, pulled the choke out, started it again, started right up. Started putting. Sounded good. Sounded pretty good. About 30 seconds to a minute later I noticed a trickle of oil starting to bleed out so thinking about it I thought wow where's that coming from because it was running out of the from the top of the engine out onto the casing and then running down the casing to the uh, starter after playing with it last night and starting it a couple of different times and looking at it with a flashlight to try to figure where the oil's coming from I suddenly realized you know when I put that head gasket in I didn't do the, the bottom one I gooped on one side but I didn't goop it on the other because I wasn't sure everything was gonna fit so I got to take the whole head off and goop both sides of both gaskets with the orange goop put it back together that should do that and the carburetor needle valve uh, slash float bowl system is overflowing which means the needle valve stuck so I'm gonna have to take those carburetors off and apart clean them it's gonna cost a can of carburetor cleaner <clears throat> these things happen but on the upside if I take a whole day to do that to tear this engine down again I don't want to take it off the bike I'll just take the heads off you gotta take the front pipes off, got to disconnect the carburetors and the linkage, and I can take the whole assembly off as one big, once I, once I take the valve cover off and the rocker arm assembly, take those head bolts out, both pieces of those heads, the jug and the head itself will come off, <clears throat> then I can regroup the, sur the surfaces of the gasket right up here on the table, put it back in. And square everything up, but it's it's you know it's a whole day job. Take at least a few hours. It's got to be done right. I don't feel like doing it right now. Maybe later. Got the gas. The seats got to come off. Gas tanks got to come off. The uh, upper mounting bolts got to come loose. The ones that hold it to the frame on the uh, top and. Uh, the tensioner screws got to come loose. The head bolts got to come off. The rock arm assemblies, like I said, have to be removed. Spark plug wires have to be removed. Uh, and probably the carburetor linkage as well has to be disconnected if I'm going to leave the carburetors on. If I'm going to take the carburetors off, then it don't matter. Either way, they're a bitch to get out unless I take that... Uh, upper engine mount out and then I got more room to move my tools and get my hands in there. It's uh, that little eight millimeter screw. It's just it's got a little tiny head on it. And eight millimeter size and it's just 
rack your, your knuckles getting in there with the little tool. It's like, it's just all pain in the ass. I hate working on that part of it. Meanwhile, during this whole fiasco, since Memorial Day, well, this this has been going on for months. I've been working on this bike for months, off and on, because it. I started working on it back in February, believe it or not. We are sitting here one day and Brian started scolding me about how come you're not working on your bike yet. So then that very next day I got busy, started hauling my stuff out, inspecting all the parts and you know, getting ready to build an engine. So I built the engine before I ever brought the bike out. The bike was in the garage. I didn't want anybody even seeing it. I built the engine and uh, and I should have, you know, but near the end of construction of the engine, I was getting so flabbergasted <coughs> that I didn't coop up. I, I didn't coop up one gasket on one side, and on the other, <coughs> excuse me, on the other gasket, the one that goes between the head and the jug. I don't, I don't believe I gooped that at all. I don't know, but I'm gonna take it apart. I'm pretty sure that's where the oil leak's coming from. So, it, if I have to, I don't want to, but if I absolutely have to, <clears throat> take the bottom part of the head, the jugs, out, that means I have to go through the problem of reseating the pistons again, and that's going to be a nightmare because my piston, uh, my ring compressors, big auto compressor. I will either have to buy the small motorcycle compressors that go around it with the head in place, the kind that Triumphs and Norton use are like 16, 16, 17 bucks a piece. They'll go around the piston, you can compress it with the head on and lift it up. I'm going to either need those kind of ring compressors or I'm going to have to lift the head up ever so slightly above the inserts on the jugs and um, I won't be able to replace the head gasket at all. I'll just be able to take goo and you know get a finger in there maybe if I'm lucky and put goo around it. It's either that or I'll have to take the, the engine off the bike again because <clears throat> and do a bunch of rigmarole it's just it's not worth trying to mess with it up on the on the bike at this point um, if it gets to it because in order to compress the rings on the pistons with my ring compressor they have to come loose from the crankshaft again which means I have to take the whole engine off the bike and it might come down to that you know, but at this point, because I've done it already, it, it wouldn't be much. It's just heavy. And, it's, and, it's, and if you drop the casing, it will break. It's aluminum. It's cast aluminum. It will break if it gets a hard thump. And uh, that, will, that will ruin everything. I already knocked a little nipple off the front of the... Uh, front of casing where one of the bolt holes goes up and rounds off the top, the little top pops right off. There's dirt and inside inside of the thread hole there was dirt. When I threaded the bolt that was sticking and <coughs> I kept twisting it. And rather than shear the bolt, it popped the fucking part of my French nipple right off the top of the casing. Good thing it wasn't a position that was exposed to the inside oil case. It would be squirting oil like a dare, <clears throat> but it, it's not. So anyways, that's just, it's one more issue. You gotta go slow with these things. This is, you know, it's 1980. So that's uh, 36 years old. Now, 
Has it been in operation for 30, 36 continuous years? Hell no. Sat in this old man's garage that I bought it from for who knows how long. And then it sat over here for four years. I ran it for one year, off and on, not that much, but I ran it for about a year before it crapped out. And it was some good riding. I had some good times. I went up to uh, I went up to Lake Hemet in Idlewild. Uh, it was dripping oil then, so I didn't want to go too far. I, I knew it had problems at that point. And it had problems right from the day I purchased it. So it had an, a pretty, pretty, pretty extensive oil leak at the time I took it up to um, Idlewild. But it didn't drip so much so that I couldn't go anywhere. And I just let it drip. And, you know, keep an eye on it. But it was all coming from underneath that where the starter goes in. The starter had been hit and wrapped the case. And it broke right where the flywheel, starter flywheel, uh, comes in and engages the starter. So it kind of broke in there. And where the standoffs screw in, I think. Something like that. <clears throat> anyway, this case is new. It doesn't have those same problems, and hopefully it won't. But uh, it's just step by step, step by step. Slow going, says the tortoise. But the only way to get good results. I, I could be doing it right now, but I'm not. I'm just like Lenny says yesterday. You need just need motivation. I'm not motivated. I'm thinking I need 123 bucks to get this on the road that I don't have. I need 300 bucks to get back home that I don't have. So I can see my dad before he dies. If that's even possible at this point, I don't know. My dad's in um, the hospital. He's hospitalized. He's uh, got uh, urinary tract infections and he's suffering from what appears to be now um, advanced stages of dementia and he's uh, been in rehab <coughs> apparently the last month <coughs> month and a half or so he's uh, deteriorated steadily from where they took his driver's license away because he's running stop signs 